let's talk about this 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 techno feudalism that we that we're seeing. Um, this was an article from Sheer Post, and uh, oh man, I am blanking on the person who wrote the article. Uh, I know her first name is Ellen, and I'm and I'm blanking on her last name. That's okay. Uh, but she points out, you know, th how we got to this point from having what she calls quote mom and pop capitalism. Uh, to techno feudalism, which is what we're what what she says we're living in now, right? And and the way she points that out is, it, it America used to be run on mom and pop shops, mom and pop uh, industries, farms that were owned by regular average people, and stores and storefronts and all this stuff were just owned by regular average people. Um, and then through uh, very you know the industrial revolution, the the re the deregulation of corporations. Um, and the the notion of infinite growth within capitalism has essentially made the wealthy even wealthier, right? So you know you look at people like Bezos, uh, Elon Musk, Mark Zuckerberg, Bill Gates. They become what they call centibillionaires, which is like they have uh, more than a hundred million dollars. That's what this lady points out. Um, and at this point, you know what what we know. And this is sort of kind of, the, I guess, narrative control is the narrative control is these people became sent to billionaires. They got their hundreds of billions of dollars through hard work, grit, determination, and pulling themselves up by their bootstraps. And the reality uh, is they didn't do that. They, they actually made their billions through tax loopholes, through owning politicians, through treating, treating their working class like utter dog shit. Uh, and and you know stealing from the working class. That, that's primarily how they made a lot of their money. They then and then basically in the, during the pandemic, they manufacture these demands, uh, and then they inflate the prices. Right. That's kind of what happened. Like the toilet paper thing is kind of like a great example of that, because it's basically like. They were like, "Oh my God, we're shutting down, and we won't be able to go out and do stuff." Holy shit. Guys, we don't know when supplies are coming back in. And, you know, people rush to the store and, you know, these stores get to be like, oh, okay, yeah, a, a roll of toilet paper that was $4 is now $7 or $12. And, and you know, people are going to pay those kinds of prices. Gas stations do that shit all the time. During a natural disaster, when they know that people are going to be leaving town, they jack up their prices. You know, they they people freak out. We, just, we saw that with what happened with the Colonial Pipeline incident. If they paid people now again to go back to the working class, if they paid people what they're worth, then I mean we wouldn't have the income divide that we see today. Our income divide is crazy; it's astronomical. Uh, I think it's yeah. I think we have the largest income gap in in the world. America does. Uh, don't quote me on that. I might be wrong about it, but. I'm 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 almost certain that that's what the case is. So she goes on to talk about and she does something that I don't particularly care for, which is like she categorizes capitalism. Right? So she talks about uh philanthro capitalism, which I've kind of gone after several times uh in various streams, right? And and <laughs> I mentioned this. I mentioned the term compassionate capitalism to Rod Placone and, uh, on one of his streams, and he kind of like just ranted about like why there isn't. And I was like, I agree with you. I 100% agree with you. I'm just kind of telling you what people have told me. You know, I'm, I'm kind of quoting other people. Uh, I'm not saying there is something called compassionate capitalism because I don't believe that there ca the the categories of capitalism just justify capitalism even more, right? So like this philanthro capitalism, for example, is essentially the transfer of wealth to an LLC or a nonprofit, and they use that nonprofit to make charitable donations to various different you know um, charities and causes and things of that sort. And it all ends up being a tax break for them because they ran it through an LLC. They ran it through a nonprofit. Uh, you know, Jack Dorsey was doing that. Jack Dorsey was partnering up with Andrew Yang's uh, Humanity First campaign or, or, or some shit like that, where Andrew Yang was like, we're going to instate a UBI by giving somebody uh, a one-time payment of like 200 bucks, right? 
And Jack Dorsey was was going to donate to this so that more people can get two hundred dollars, which that's not UBI. Uh, and also, like, I criticized it because I was like, well, Jack Dorsey isn't giving them the, isn't donating this money so that Andrew Yang can give 10 extra people a, a, a two a one time stimulus of two hundred dollars. Uh, he's running it through this nonprofit he set up in Delaware so that they don't have to pay taxes and they get returns on what they donate. If he was actually going to do it, if he was actually philanthropic, he wouldn't run it through. Like, if I make a donation to uh, to a mutual aid, I don't contact them and be like, hey, I set up this nonprofit and uh, it, it's it's this, it's based in Delaware and I live in Pittsburgh, but that doesn't matter. But that's... The nonprofit is what's going to get like they would be like, why don't you just give it like what's the but it's tax incentives. He's going to make a bigger return on his donations than just making the donation. Right. Like that's why they funnel it through the things that they funnel it through. And boy, howdy, did I fucking get chastised for criticizing the great and benevolent nose pierced Jack Dorsey of Twitter. Oh, how dare, what a monstrous, thing. he's being nice, you should let him be nice, why are you, these people will never do anything nice again, and it's like, he's not doing anything nice, he's fucking getting, he's, he's benefiting on the back end, but that's what philanthro capitalism is, it's still fucking capitalism, by the way, all of these different fucking various categories of capital just make it sound like it's pokemon to me right like mom and pop capitalism evolves into industrial capitalism which evolves into deregulated capitalism and banking capitalism but then if you use the special kindness stone it evolves into philanthro capitalism and it wears a nose ring and it softly speaks into podcasts and talks to guys like joe rogan and says oh we understand what censorship is we em empathize with so they use words like kindness and compassion and the ultimate form uh the ultimate evolution of capitalism is something i'm, I'm not going to say what the ultimate because that's a spoiler for later but uh anyway i don't know i kind of lost myself in that character i don't even know what that character was uh but <laughs> so the article goes on and says well how do we pull ourselves out of this shit how do we pull ourselves out of this? Well, we got to do, um, we got to tax the rich. We got to tax them. That's what we have to do. And she pulls up Warren's plan. She was like, oh, Warren had this plan where where she would tax them at 1% uh, 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 after 50 million. So you get to keep your 50 mil. All right. Just pocket that money. Don't worry about it. But 50 million and one, boom, we're getting a penny from you. We're taking that fucking penny. Mmm. Fucking gotcha. Lizzie Warren coming in hot. 1% tax after 50 million. Billionaires thought they were going to get away with it, but here comes Lizzie Dubs. Lizzie Dubs coming in with a one-two punch. 50 million, 1% tax. Almost fucking nothing. Oh, you made a billion dollars? Play going to hit 3%. What's up? Don't you fuck with Lizzie Dubs. Lizzie, Lizzie Dubs is going to make you pay an infinitesimal amount of money to taxes that you'll fight and then they'll never fucking bring it up again. I mean, where, where have they talked about this? A 1% per tax after 50 million. You know how much fucking money $50 million is? That's 50 million packets of ramen. Can you imagine that? <laughs> I don't know, it might be more than I think it might be more than that because I don't I don't know how much individual packets of ramen cost right now. Uh, this is going to be really hard to do though, and not to be the big downer. But first of all, one per what, what the one to three percent? What the fuck? What, you're not. All this is doing is it, it just incentivizes people to continue being rich, right? That's all it does. Like we don't need billionaires. We just don't. That's not a necessity. 
billionaires are not a necessity. Fucking millionaires aren't a necessity. How much money do you really need to live? But it's really hard to do when you live in an oligarchy, which we do. It's not a democracy. It's an oligarchy. Uh, why? Because these rich fucks control the legislation. They control politicians. They use their lobbyists. They pay them outright. Not just that. You can't have a tax plan like this without putting a law to say that it's illegal to hide your money in shell corporations based in Delaware where they don't have to pay taxes or in offshore accounts. If you're not going to make a law that says that, then, you know, your fucking negligible bullshit tax that you're putting on these rich people uh, is 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 worthless and meaningless. It's really, really hard to do in a government that is owned and controlled by billionaires and corporations. And that's what America is. Provably. There's a Princeton study that proved it. The more that corporations want something, the more it's going to get done. The more that people want something, it doesn't matter. The The fervor stays the same in, inside Congress. So this is this is what she talked where, where I was like, oh, Jesus. Like, I really... I, I'm sure this woman means really well and she's very smart and, and knows all of the economic w whatever, right? I'm not, I don't know that sort of stuff. You know, it's like I got a checking account and a savings account and I can barely hold it. Like I can barely figure that shit out, you know, uh, brag. Uh, but, <laughs> um, he, like he talks about humanist capitalism. That's she, she brings up that this there's a particular economic philosopher, I guess, uh, that talks about um, humanist capitalism. And basically what he says is uh, we have to democratize the markets. Uh, and I just want to say fucking humanist capitalism it doesn't exist. Right. It's again, Andrew Yang brought up the whole thing of like human centered capitalism. We're going to create capitalism that's focused on the people. It doesn't fucking exist because capitalism runs on infinite profits on a finite planet. It doesn't exist. So humanist capitalism is in the same fucking vein. It doesn't exist. And if we did democratize the marketplace, then we would see the GameStop situation happening nonstop, nonstop. Average people would be would be fucking destroying Wall Street for billions, hundreds and billions of dollars. We would destroy Wall Street for the equivalent of what Jeff Bezos is worth. Nonstop if the markets were democratized. And I, I got to say, uh, fuck the markets. Who gives a rat's ass about the fucking market? I don't care about the stock market. I don't care about the popularity contest for rich people. I don't care about this fucking Ponzi scheme. You, if you really want, if you really want, quote, humanist capitalism, you would, if you want anything that's related to humanism, period, you would democratize the workplace. You would, you would, you would put worker co-ops in place. But that would take us into socialism. That would mean that if 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 uh, if we do have and, and and I've done a whole I've done a whole show and video about worker co-ops, uh, you know, with uh, talk. Doctor Richard Wolf talks about this pretty extensively, and I've done a whole video about that. That I would encourage you guys to go check out on on any platform that you feel like you want to. But um, anyway, the, the the point I'm trying to make, I guess, is worker co-ops would mean that we would collapse the income divide because you would have everybody voting and saying yeah you know what i don't think the ceo should be making upwards of 600 times that of the lowest paid employee eight maybe 10 okay we can handle that we also want a rotation of upper management of c of of the the, the board right we want to vote for who gets to be on the board so every two years it gets rotated. 
we can figure out pay raises. Oh, oh, somebody on the board wants a pay raise? Great. That means the lowest employee needs to get a pay raise too, and everybody in succession higher. That's democratizing the workplace. That's humanist. That's thinking about humans first. That's thinking about your people. What's going to benefit the company is if your workers are taken care of and they feel like they're a part of something and they feel like they have, uh, you know, they can make decisions about where the company is headed and what what's going on within the company. They care more. Productivity increases. Profit increases. There's less accidents. People are excited about going to work. It changes the dynamic between work and people. That's what we need to see. But that's not humanist capitalism. That's worker co-ops, and that is socialism. And that is a very good thing. The last point I'll, I'll make is uh, capitalism does not breed democracies. Capitalism breeds authoritarianism. Socialism can have democracies. Communism can have democracies. Not under capitalism. It'll feign democracies, as we do in this country. You can vote for who you want to vote for, kind of. Usually the options are going to be between Rapey McRacist number one and Rapey McRacist number two. Boy, democracy! Again, it's, it's, it's controlling that Overton window is what the election cycle is doing. But under capitalism, you don't have a democracy. You have an oligarchy. That's the only thing you can have. Because it's based on money and, and governments and uh, any sort of organizations controlled by money. That's what it is. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Let's look at your comments. Ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba -ba -ba. Ba -da ba ba da da ha, feisty Ron is a is it is it is a funny it's it's fun to watch Ron get get a little feisty. I do appreciate that. Uh, Holly says can't categorize capitalism. It's just justifying capitalism. Yes, uh, I I I I broke down a Richard Wolf article basically talking about how you can't you whatever qualifier you put for capitalism just justifies it even more, uh, and it justifies the horrible things that capitalism has done. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. <laughs> there's there's a uh, better real UBI, not Yang's. Yeah, real UBI is not um, what Andrew Yang is proposing. Uh, Senegal Girl says, Ugh, the self serving Dorsey Yang come. <laughs> yes, um, <laughs> Pokemon reference and analogy is something I can relate to. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I, I thought that, that was fun. Uh, Holly asks, how many corporations paid zero tax last year? A lot of them. A lot of them. Um, just throw a fraction uh, of that at our representatives and poof, all gone. Yeah, it's a, they just get rid of uh, all, all the um, all the taxes for rich corporations. Uh, Delaware, Cayman Islands, Panama Papers. Yeah, Panama Papers basically revealed how many fucking people across the globe are hiding money in offshore accounts so that it doesn't get taxed. Uh, humanist capitalism, philanthropic capitalism, oxymorons. Yeah, because it's all about the profit margins. It's all about making money on the back end. So uh, CG says, like, whose version of democracy are we talking about here? Yeah, it's a it's it's the capitalist version of democracy. It's a, it's this fake democracy of like, see, you have rights, kind of. Uh, okay, now vote for the person we told you to vote for capitalist capitalism is the antithesis of democracy yes exactly absolutely uh so all right thank you guys so much for tuning into this video if you enjoyed this video please make sure you hit the like button and please make sure you share this content out sharing is very important sharing is how independent media gets the word out there about topics that corporate media doesn't even want to mention on their networks so it's really up to you guys corporate media very much depends on the people we are people powered media that's what we really are uh, another great way to help if you're on stable financial ground is to uh, make a financial contribution to this channel 
And you can do so over at krishmohanhaha.com slash donate. You can become a sustaining member, which gets you free tickets, early access to videos, bonus stand-up comedy and storytelling content, uh, a way for you to communicate directly with me, ask me questions, and other uh, premium content that uh, will be released on a monthly basis. Um, or you can make a one-time donation as well on that same website. Um, I also have uh, various stand-up comedy albums. I have about six comedy albums out right now uh, that are available on my website at krishmohanhaha.com. And most of them, if you get them off of Bandcamp, are available for a dollar or a, a pay-what-you-want pricing. And I also want to mention that I do have an online merch store. Uh, you can go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com, click on the merch tab, and check out all of the designs that I've made myself. And the Julian Assange shirt, there is a Julian Assange shirt that's on the website. All the profit from the Julian Assange designs will be going to uh, pro-Assange activists, such as Action for Assange, uh, Kevin Gastola, Richard Methurst, folks uh, 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 that, that are covering and talking about Assange. So I'm going to be making donations to them. Um, uh, it'll be 100% of the profits I make off of that shirt. Uh, thank you again for tuning in. Thank you again to all the people that have made contributions to the show, that regularly check out my content, that have subscribed to my channels. I, I very, very much appreciate it, and uh, and you guys help keep this uh, keep keep this this train a moving. So I, I very much appreciate that. Until the next video, we'll see you on the road. See you guys.